Hey, how's it going dudes? Uh, this is Brad the Guitologist. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this pedal that was sent to me by Dave Levine of Dave's Guitar Channel. And I can't remember exactly what he said was wrong with this, but we're gonna take a look at it. Hopefully, uh, it's, it's not gonna be a difficult fix, but we shall see. I think he said it was having pow issues powering on, so I'm hoping this will be a really quick kind of real-time sort of fix here with minimal editing that's the idea on this one I've only got it up here on the bench because I just suspect it might be something simple so if you guys haven't seen Dave's channel yet uh, definitely check him out like I said uh, Dave's guitar channel I'll put a link down in the description to his channel if you haven't subscribed he's got a lot of really good lessons if you're into uh, older, like 70 soft rock and stuff like that, man. He does some really f great lessons on stuff like that. Um, some of the best I've ever seen as far as, you know, how to's on how to play certain songs. Well, let's see what we have here. So we've got some board mounted potentiometers. That's the first thing I notice. And we'll just kind of inspect the board here. Like I said, I think there might be a power issue. I asked him. Uh, I asked him if it was, um, if he checked the battery, and apparently he already has, so we have some terminals here that, or some pads that aren't in use on these. The solder joints, as far as I can tell, all look pretty okay, except for one. That one right there is a bit questionable. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Let's see if you can... See if I can get it a little bit closer for you. That one, that one right there is just to me looks a bit sus, possibly suspect. I could reflow that for sure. Is that right there? We got some stray. I don't think that was solder. Okay, yeah, again, I don't see anything that's really jumping out at me here. Let's, um, f tell you what, let's test the battery. 9.4 volts or thereabouts. So I think the battery's good. Let's plug it into the amp and see what, uh, what it does or doesn't do. Not sure what that's supposed to be doing, this warp control. Um, it's kind of hard to see the controls, isn't it? Hang on, let's get you a little closer. Thank you. 
Okay, so that seems to be that seems to be oscillating. Um, almost like a phaser of some sort. Let's see if there's like some kind of intermittent connection here. I'll just poke around while messing with it. Oop. Oh, that was the that was the switch. I pressed down and flipped the switch. Um Yeah, I just can't. This is one of those situations uh, that happens from time to time where I just cannot repeat uh, the issue. I can't recreate the issue. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and pull the board and stuff, check the other side, and just make sure there's uh, nothing that seems out of place or nothing that seems dislodged or anything like that. Uh, and while I have this out, I will go ahead and clean these pots. And uh, I'll probably also go ahead and tension the terminals on the battery terminal. And then I think we're going to be okay. We'll clean the jacks, stuff like that. So, you know, let's go ahead and do that. Cool pedal, though, so far. I mean, I, I like the tone of it. And no, I'm not marring up the, pl the face plate. I just need a tiny bit of help is all. I'm not, try I'm not uh, overly prying this. Coming loose or not? Oh, I got. I see. Interesting. Okay, this is a different. I don't know if you see the switch in there, but the switch. Um, I don't have to take the switch off. Okay. Oh sh. Uh -huh. I see what they've done. All right, so they have they have assembled this thing in place. There's no way to get this out. There's no way to get this out without actually desoldering uh, the jacks. So you know, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. It's not worth taking out and then 
risking breaking something and then that's going to be my fault for breaking it you know so usually for the sake of being able to see inside of something i would uh, show you the other side of this board but in this instance it's not going to be worth it because see like i say do you see how this is through the chassis over here and this one is through the chassis over here and there's no way to get this board out of here without actually desoldering one of these probably this one because they've got this little tab over here anyway but one of them would have to come out yeah it would have to be this one because we've got the uh got the power on this side anyway it wouldn't make sense otherwise so what that's what we would do we would take this one out and then this one would slide into place using that little tab right there and then you would just raise it up in uh, through the holes using that tab and then when you were done soldering that into place you'd bend that over and then solder that also to help hold it so that's how they assembled it but i'm not going to disassemble it in light of that so i don't like that uh, aspect of it because i mean obviously that's another hindrance of getting into the thing and you've got so many you got so many pedal makers as it is who are just really <clears throat> paranoid of having their designs uh well i would say stolen but they're usually already stolen anyway it's not like there's very much new under the sun just about every uh, distortion box or you know overdrive pedal is a clone or a close clone or a twist on something else that already came before it anyway so it's not, it's not like they're reinventing the wheel here. It's just, you know, the way it's assembled, there's no way for me to get it out. So make sure it still clicks. Yeah. I do like that switch, uh, the way that they've done that. I don't, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but you can see the, uh, the actual switch itself is a different mechanism than this down here, which is just pressed. It looks like it's just pressed down with a spring, so... I mean, it's clever, and it keeps you from actually putting direct pressure onto the board. You have you have a space in between, and that spring is going to help uh, regulate the amount of pressure that someone is capable of putting onto this board by stomping on this. So, you know, that's a good idea, and it's a good design, and I do I commend them on that part for sure. I, from what I see here, this would probably be a pretty good pedal in terms of uh, the you know the longevity of it now obviously he was having some kind of problem with it but i just cannot recreate the problem my only thought is maybe when he put the battery in it just wasn't getting good contact and he thought that he had you know put it in um good enough that it should have worked but it just it's possible so, you know sometimes when you put something when you hook something up like that um even though it seems to it seems like uh, it's got good connection and all that. There could be a layer of, who knows, moisture from the air, you know, that had gotten onto the terminals. And, uh, you know, you just got this microscopic kind of layer of film, you know. And then when you take the battery off and you put it back on again, it just kind of scratches off some of that film. And, and it just, for whatever reason, then it starts getting connection. You know, there's things like that that do happen. If you play in bars a lot, too. Uh, or well, it used to be particularly, but now not so much anymore since smoking, you know, most smoking is banned in most places. So, um, but if this pedal was around whenever there was smoking in a lot of venues, uh, they could have gone through that sort of environment as well. And, uh, you know, the tar that gets deposited on just about everything uh, in a bar atmosphere, you know, from the old days would have... Uh, compromised connections and even ruined some equipment so I mean that's that's possible as well I'm not saying that is the case here but I'm just coming up with with uh, ideas that it might and it might have nothing to do with any of that it might have just been that something was intermittent and I just am not able to recreate the problem here but we're going to go ahead and uh, spray these controls at the very least Okay, and now we'll do some jacks. Go 
ahead and spray these battery terminals as well. Just give them a little bit of a wipe down. And try it again. It seems to be working just fine now. Um, the only function I have not tested is the is the uh, is the wall wart DC power function, um, and I will I'll get a hold of him and make sure that that was not a problem. It probably is all right. I could hook up to my bench power supply, but um, I think we're going to be all right on that. But I mean, it looks to me like it's it's fine. It does sound pretty good. It's a good sound on the pedal. Sound even better if I tune my guitar, but. Yeah, so that's it. That's a really, really easy, f I say fix, but there really wasn't much wrong with it. Just a little bit of cleaning, and that's it. So yeah, that'll do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit subscribe down below if you did, and we'll see you all later.